Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to uh, start our lecture. It is the, 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 the ninth lecture, Corpus, Appro uh, Corpus Approach to Discourse Analysis. There are a number of advantages, actually, in using corpora to look at the use of language from a discursive perspective. As Baiba, Conrad, and Rubin, 1998, point out. Until recently, many research studies have been used uh, based on comparatively small sets of textual data and have not typically been corpus-based. Corpus -based. As a result, it is often hard to generalize from these analyses. Larger sets of data analyzed from a corpus perspective can make these findings of discourse studies more generalizable. Corpus studies can make an important contribution to our understanding of the characteristics of spoken and written discourse. In this lecture, we are going to shed light on what is a corpus, kinds of corp corpora, design and construction of corpora, issues to consider in constructing a corpora, uh, corpus, the long man spoken, a written English corpus, performances, phenomena of conversational discourse, discourse characteristics of conversational English, uh, constructional principles of conversational discourse, corpus studies of the social nature of, of discourse, collocation and corpus studies, corpus studies and academic writing, criticism of corpus studies, and then the summer. So let's start with the, the first one, which is what is a corpus? Before discussing corpus-based approaches to discourse analysis, it is necessary to define what a corpus usually is. It is generally assumed that a corpus is a collection of spoken or written authentic text that is representative of a particular area of language use by virtue of its size and conception. It is not always the case, however, that the corpus is representative of language use in general, or even of a specific language variety, as the data set may be actually very uh, specialized, such as, for example, material collected from the internet. And it may uh, not always be based on uh, samples of complete text, because the data may be not only of uh, uh, the spoken or written discourse of a single person, such as a single author's written work. It is important then to be aware of the specific nature and source of corpus uh, of, uh, source of corpus data so that appropriate claims can be made from the analyses that are based on it. So a corpus is usually computer readable and able to, to be accessed with tools such as concordances which are able to find and sort out language patterns. The corpus has usually, although not always, been designed for the purpose of the analysis. And the text have been selected to provide a sample of specific text types or genres or a broad and balanced sample of spoken and or written discourse. This is, of course, according to Stubbs. Stubbs and I'm going to read the quotation he mentions. He states that Corbis studies draw on collections of text that are usually stored and analyzed electronically. They look at the occurrence and reoccurrence of particular linguistic features to see how and where they occur in the discourse. They may look at words that typically occur together which means collocations, or they may look at the frequency of a particular item. Corpus studies may look at language use in general, or they may look at the use of a particular linguistic feature in a particular domain, such as spoken academic discourse, or use of the item in a particular genre 
such as university uh, tutorial discussions. Still, this is a quotation taken from Stubbs 2004. Now we are going to move to the uh, second type, which is kinds of corpora. We have two types of corpora, uh, general corpora and specified corpora. And the most important one is the specialized or specified corpora. General corpora. Corpora may be general or they may, uh, may be specialized, as I uh, mentioned. A general corpus always known as a reference corpus. So general always uh, known as a reference corpus. Uh, this is a quotation taken from uh, Robin and Simpson, 2004. General corpora aims, uh, general corpus aims to represent language in its broadest sense and to serve as a widely available resource for baseline or comparative studies of general linguistic features. So our use of a general corpus, for example, might be to examine words that collocate with girl and lady in English in general, as opposite to words they collocate in particular domain of use, such as online personal ads. A further use of a general corpus might be to see to what extent hedge, hedges, such as, for example, sort of and kind of, are typical of English in general, as compared with what words these hedges typically collocate with, within uh, within spoken academic discourse. So a general corpus thus provides sample data from, from, uh, from which we can make uh, generalizations about spoken and uh, written discourse as a whole and frequencies of occurrence and co-occurrence of particular aspects of language in discourse. So it will not, however, tell us about the language and discourse of, uh, of, uh, of particular genres or domain of use, unless the corpus can be broken down into separate genres or areas of use in some way. For this, uh, we need to another type of, of uh, genre in which it is a specialized corpora. Now we move to the a special, uh, to, uh, to a specialized corpora. Specialized corpora, uh, corpus, as Hansen 2002 explains, is, and this is a quotation, a corpus of text of a particular type, such as newspaper editorials, geography textbooks, academic articles in a particular subject, or maybe lectures, casual conversations, uh, essays written by students, etc. It aims to be representative of a given type of text. It is used to investigate a particular type of language. Here, the, the quotation is ended. Uh, specialized corpora are required when the research questions relates to the use of spoken and or written. So it deals with spoken or written discourse in a particular kinds of text or in a particular situation. So a specialized corpus might be used, for example, to uh, examine the change in topic in an academic presentation. It might also look at an aspect of students academic writing discourse and compare this with, uh, with use of the same features in published academic writing. Or it may look at discourse features of a particular academic genre, such as theses and desert, uh, dissertations. Or uh, discourse level aspects of the uh, dissertation defenses. So it has variety of uh, fields to look uh, to look at on. So it is um, more particular than the uh, general corpora. And in these specific uh, uh, corpora, we have uh, uh, some schools. One of these schools is. The Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English. So in contrast to a general corpus, then a specialized corpus is usually designed with a particular research project in mind. 
An example of this is the Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English. We can call it like me case, okay? Which has data, and please pay attention to this, from a wide range of spoken academic genres, so spoken, as well as information. So there is an addition uh, to, to the spoken academic genre. There are information on speakers' uh, attributes and characteristics of the speech, uh, the speech events contained in the data. This is actually an open access corpus and is available without charge to people who wish to use it, who wish to use it. And this is the engine for the website, the engine for uh, the, one, uh, uh, the website. One study, one study uh, uh, carried out using the me case. Okay, so one study carried out using the me case corpus was an investigation of the uses of hedges, such as sort of, sorta, and kind of, kinda, in a spoken academic discourse. There were uh, actually these were found to be more common in some disciplines, such as, for example, humanities, than uh, to be found in other, uh, 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 in other disciplines, such as science. Other uh, me case, in which it is uh, Michigan, uh, Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English, uh, have exam examined the ways in which new episodes are flagged in academic lectures and also group discussions by the use of framework markers such as OK, so, and now. This is according to uh, Swell's 2001. As well as other aspects, other aspects of spoken academic discourse, such as, for example, uh, hedging in the discourse of academic lectures. Now, uh, I have this, uh, I'm going to read a um, uh, uh, conversation uh, uh, quoted from uh, Maronan 2001. And please pay attention to, way, uh, to the way I'm going to read this quotation. Okay, okay. Um, uh, let me get into sort of the more serious stuff. And uh, um, uh, what I'm uh, hoping to do with the remainder of, uh, of, uh, of uh, this first hour is just give you some uh, uh, a bit of uh, perspective. So where uh, biology fits into um, uh, sort of uh, the rest of your education. And hopefully I, uh, I, uh, I can um, begin this framework with uh, we are uh, gonna fall in, uh, in uh, the rest of the, of the term. So I, I, uh, I have entitled this lecture, Philosophy of Science, uh, uh, or uh, at least that is uh, the point uh, I'm talking uh, about now. The stopping and hesitations and the usage of uh, hedging uh, such as uh, I, 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 so, 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 um, um, um. this is not mine. These are included in the quotation taken from uh, Maronin 2001, page 174. So findings from Mikkei's projects have been, uh, of course, I'm going to say Mikkei's instead of uh, saying Michigan Corpus of Academic uh, Spoken English. So I'm going to say it as one word, Mikkei's. Uh, uh, so the findings taken from Mikkei's projects have been integrated into training courses for international teaching uh, assistant and for the teaching of all representations. The Mikkei's data has uh, also been used in the development of English language test. Uh, test. So this is one school, the, 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 the Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English, which uses... Um, uses uh, generalized corpus. Now we are going to move to another uh, school or academic uh, study. Uh, it is the British Academic Spoken. Actually, we have the British American Spoken and we have the British Academic Written. 
So now we have the, uh, the British Academic Spoken English Corpus. So a similar spoken, again spoken, pay attention to spoken, a similar spoken corpus to the Michigan corpus is the British Academic Spoken English, in which we can say it is base, B-A-S-E, base, corpus. And in the, in, the, in the copy I gave you, you will find the engine for the website where you can find uh, this, uh, this corpus or this study. It has been developed at the University of Warwick and the University of Reading in the United Kingdom. One study based on the British corpus looked. So please put line below this word, looked at the relationship between lexical density and the speed in academic lectures. This study drew on data from 30 undergraduate lectures and found there was a range of speeds in the spoken discourse of the people delivering academic lectures. The lectures that were faster tended to be less lexically dense and the lectures that were slower tended to be more lexically dense. So the relation is, uh, 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 there is an opposite relation between the speed and the, uh, the uh, density uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the lecture. The range of, of uh, uh, the dense, the range of dense and the speed, the relation is uh, uh, opposite between them. Lecturers, they found that lecturers spoke more quickly or were more lexically dense if they did not expect students to take notes or if they were not presenting new content in their lecture. So they will, uh, you know, they will think that students, they know the lecture previously, so they are not going to write down notes or they don't need uh, for a, a lecturer to speak very slowly. They also spoke more quickly if they were telling uh, an, an anecdote, which was an aside, an aside to the main content of the lecture. So I'm adding something which is not part of the lecture. So I usually uh, uh, say it uh, uh, very quickly. Observations of this kind then have important implication for the development of English for academic purposes, uh, courses which aim to prepare students to study in English medium universities. So this is the second school. The third school is the British Academic Written. Now it is written English corpus. Specialized corpora may also be based on written discourse alone. Written. So now it is written. An example of this is the British Academic Written English or Bayoui Corpus. I, I, I say it like this. It is actually B-A-W-E Corpus. De developed at the University of Warwick uh, and the University of uh, Reading and Oxford, uh, Oxford Brooks University in the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom. Uh, this corpus examines the students' written assignments. So this is different. It is not spoken. It examines students' written assignments at different levels of study and in a range of disciplines with the goal, with the aim of providing a database for use by researchers and teachers to enable them to identify and describe academic writing requirements in the British university settings. So the Bayoui corpus includes contextual information. So there should be, beside the, uh, the assignments, the, there should be uh, contextual information on the students' writing, such as the gender and the year of the study of the students, also details of the course the assignment was set uh, the assignment was set for and and also the grade that was uh, awarded 
uh, to the piece of work so as to be able to consider the relationship between these variable, uh, variables and uh, the nature of the student's written academic discourse. <clears throat> so this is, <clears throat> this pay attention more to the, the written uh, assignments, the student's written assignments beside uh, other uh, uh, information. So this pay attention to written rather than spoken. Now, there is a, a third or a fourth school, uh, which is the TOEFL spoken and written academic uh, language corpus. <clears throat> a specialized corpus may include both spoken now and written discourse. So this is a mixture between uh, uh, spoken and written discourse. An example of a corpus which does this is the TOEFL 2000 spoken and written academic language corpus. This is a specialized corpus. This corpus aimed to provide a comprehensive linguistic description of spoken and written registers in USA universities, although not, in this case, examples of students, there are not examples of students writing. The TOEFL corpus was made up, was made up of, uh, 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 of 2.7 million words and aimed to present the spoken and academic genres that university students in the United States have to participate in or read, such as, for example, class sessions, office hour conversations, uh, study group discussions, on-campus uh, uh, service encounters, textbooks, reading packs, university catalog uh, catalog uh, catalogs, and brochures. So different journals. The Kerbis data, the Kerbis data was collected. So they are collected uh, across actually four academic sites, four academic uh, sites, each representing a different type of university. The first side, a teacher's college, and the other, a mid-sized regional university, the third, an urban research university, and final, uh, finally, a rural research university. <clears throat> the spoken data was mostly recorded, so the data was mostly recorded by uh, students, although academic and other uh, staff uh, recorded office hours material and also uh, surface, although they are, they might encounter. The spoken and written classroom material focused on the disciplines of business, education, engineering, humanities, nature and social uh, sciences at lower and upper undergraduate and graduate levels of study. A key observation of the TOEFL study was that spoken genres in the USA university settings are fundamentally different from written genres. So spoken uh, are, uh, the sp spoken genres are different from written genres. The study found, however, that classroom teaching in the United States was similar in many ways to conversational genres. It found that language use varied in the textbooks of different disciplines, but not, of course, in a classroom teaching in different disciplines. Now we will move to design and construction of corpora. There are thus a number of already established corpora that can be used for doing corpus-based discourse studies. I have to, to have uh, 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 designs for, for uh, my corpora. So these contain data that can be used for asking uh, very many questions about the use of spoken, and written discourse, both in general and in specific areas of use, such as academic writing or speaking. If, however, your interest is in, in, in what happens in a particular genre or in a particular genre in a setting for which there is no available data, then you will have to make up your own corpus for your study. Highlands 2002, a study of the use of personal pronouns 
such as, for example, I, me, we, and us in Hong Kong's students' academic writing. We can consider it as, as an example of a corpus that was designed to answer a question about the use of discourse in a particular genre, in a particular setting. So in this, the, the specific aim of his study was to examine the extent to which student writers use self-mentioned I, for example, we, us, okay, in their text to strengthen their arguments and to gain personal recognition for their claims and their routine discourse, as, of course, expert writers do. Uh, uh, Highland's question was related to issues of discourse and identity. And the place of, of this, the place of this writing practice in a particular academic and social community. A corpus uh, collected uh, not in the same college. It is collected at another institution or maybe in another country would not have told him what student at his institution did. He was, however, uh, uh, able to use an exi existing corpus to compare his findings uh, with how, how published academic writers use personal pronouns in their writing as a reference point for his study. Uh, thus, by using his own custom-made corpus and by using an existing corpus, he uh, become able uh, to, uh, to compare the findings of his study with the practices of the broader academic community, and he, he is able to make observations about the way the student position themselves in the, in, the, in the discourse, in particular, on the basis of this. And in the same vein, Harwood, 2005, uh, also compiled his own corpus for his study of the use of the personal pronouns I and we in, uh, in journal research articles. So for his study, Harwood selected research articles from uh, from an uh, uh, area different from uh, his uh, colleagues' uh, area. So he collected uh, his articles from uh, electronic versions of journals as well as uh, manually scanned articles and, and confer converted them to text formats. His analysis of his data was both uh, quantitative and qualitative. The quantitative analysis examined the frequency of writers' use of I and we in the text and the disciplines in which this occurred. The qualitative analysis examined the use of I and we from a functional perspective. So he used, he used uh, 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 actually two analyses, uh, quantitative and qualitative. So the quant quantitative analysis examined only the frequency of, of the usage of I and we in the text, and also examined the disciplines in which uh, these pronouns occurred, while the qualitative analysis examined the use of I and we from a functional perspective, which means that what is our what the function was of these items in the text, as well as possible explanation for their usage. He then compared his findings with explanations of the use of I and we in, in published academic uh, writing textbooks. Now we will move to, uh, after we finish, from these uh, schools and the design, we are going to move to issues to consider in constructing a corpus. And in, in this section, we are going to shed light on authenticity, representative, uh, representativeness, and validity of the corpus, kinds of text to include the corpus, size of the text in the corpus, sampling and representativeness of the corpus. There are a number of issues 
that need to be considered when constructing a corpus. The first of them is what to include in the corpus. What to include in the corpus. That is the variety or dialect of the language. The genres or genre to be included. And what is the kind of text? Whether the text should be spoken, written, or both. And whether the text should be monologic, dialogic, or multi-party. Then, the size of the text, the size of the corpus, and of the individual text, as well as the number of texts to include in each category. These are the four. The, the issue is not, however, just corpus size, but also the way in which the data will be collected and the kinds of questions that will be examined using the data. Even a small corpus can be, can be useful. It is not necessarily to be very, very, uh, very long or large corpus. Small corpus can be useful for investigating certain discourse features. The sources and subject matter of the text may also be an issue uh, that needs to be considered. Other issues include, for example, sociolinguistic and demograph uh, demographic considerations, uh, such as, uh, for example, the nationality, gender, age, occupation, educational level, native language, or dialect, and the relationship between participants in the text can be also taken into consideration. So we are going to shed light on uh, these or these one by one in a summarized uh, explanation. Authenticity, representativeness, and validity of the corpus are issues in corpus constructions, as well as whether the corpus should present a static or dynamic picture of the discourse under examination. That is whether it should be a sample of discourse use at one particular point of, the, of time, so we call static or sample corpus, or whether it should give more of a moving picture view of the discourse that shows change in language use over a period of time. Uh, or sometimes we, we, we say it is a uh, monitor corpus. So this is what is meant by um, uh, authenticity, representativeness, and validity of the, of the uh, uh, corpus. Now we will move to the second one, kinds of text to include in the corpus. A key issue is that, is, is that what kind of text the corpus should contain. This decision may be based on what the corpus is designed first. You have to know what the corpus is designed for. And also, uh, uh, we have to uh, pay attention to uh, whether the, the text may also be constrained by what texts are available. Another issue is the prominence of the corpus. That is, whether it will be regularly updated so that it does not become uh, are representative, or whether it will contain, uh, it will it will remain as an example of the use of discourse at a particular point uh, in time. So these should be taken into consideration. Now we will move to the third type, which is size of the text in the corpus. The size of text in the corpus is also a consideration because some corpora aim for an even sample size of individual text. So if, for example, the corpus aims to represent a particular genre and an instances of the genre are typically long or short, this needs to be reflected in the collection of text that make up the corpus. So if you remember, some of you asked me, and they said when we, when we try to analyze um, uh, a data in our paper, on in our uh, uh, thesis or dissertation, and especially in the paper because you have limit, 
limit uh, range of papers. They said that they have, or they found that the, the, if they analyze each and everything, then the analysis or the paper will be bulky. So I advised them to give me sample, sample of the analysis, and then separately, the researcher has to analyze each and everything, and then to collect the corpus in a table with columns, and to give me the number of uh, occurrences and the frequency and percentages. Of course, in, uh, there are special programs in computer in which you can only give the data and write down the columns, whatever you want, the information you want, you want then the computer will give you the immediately uh, the readings for the corpus. But if you don't have uh, such uh, uh, a technique, you can uh, make it manually by drawing a table and uh, uh, horizontally and vertically you write down the items you want or you are analyzing. So you, so you have to analyze it separately without putting the analysis, all the analysis in the paper and avoid uh, uh, having a very bulky paper. So you have to only analyze it separately and put the, uh, the, the, the summarization of the corpus on this table, stating the number of occurrences, the, the percentages, and the frequency of the occurrences. So this is what is meant by the uh, uh, kinds of, or, or the size of text, size of the text to be included in the corpus. Now we will move to the sampling and representativeness of the corpus. Sampling is also an issue in corpus design. So the key issue here is defining the target population. So you have to know what is the target population that the corpus is wishing to represent. Uh, Baiba 1994 points out that while any selection of text is a sample, and I'm, I'm going to read uh, his words, so this is a quotation. He mentions that any selection of text is a sample, whether or not a sample is representative. However, depends first, uh, depends first of all on the extent to which it is selected from the range of text types in the target, target population. An assessment of this representativeness thus depends on the prior full definition of the population. So this is what is meant by to define the target uh, population. Uh, that I'm going to continue, that the sample is intended to represent and the techniques used to select the sample from that population. So the representativeness of the corpus further, he adds, depends on the extent to which it includes the range of linguistic distribution in the population. That is different linguistic features are differently distributed within text, across text, across text type. And a representative corpus must enable analysis of these various distributions. And here, the end of the quotation. So we finish with the four issues and we are going to move to the Longman spoken and written English corpus. The Longman speak, uh, spoken and written English um, abbreviated as uh, LSWE, L -S -W -E, corpus is an important example of a corpus study. The LSWE was used as the basis for the Longman grammar of spoken and written English. Please pay attention to this because this corpus will collect American, American and British. Though it puts emphasis on the British conversation, but uh, this uh, this design is going to uh, uh, to use the American conversation also for the sake of comparison. So the uh, Leswe was used as the basis 
for the long man grammar of spoken and written English. The last week corpus is made up of 40 million words. 40 million, 40 million words representing four major discord types. Four major discord types. Conversation, fiction, news and academic news and academic prose. So there are four with two additional categories which are non-conversational speech such as lectures and public meetings and general written non-function posts. So the main source of the conversational data in the corpus was British English. Although a smaller sample of conversational American English data was added for comparison. The news data, because we said, said the conversation, fiction, news, and academic prose. The news data contained an almost equivalent amount of a British English and American English data. The fiction sample drawn British English and American English. So please have attention to this, pay attention. As did the academic prose also. The non, here only, I want you to pay attention to this. The non-conversational speech was all British English data. And the general prose contained both British English and American English data. Because in non-conversational, we don't need to compare. So it contains only a British English. So the study was designed to contain about 5 million words of text in each discourse category. Most of the text in the corpus were produced after 1980. So uh, the sample is mostly of contemporary uh, British and American English usage. Okay, the corpus was made up of, uh, of uh, 37,244 texts and approximately 40 million and 26,000 words. The text in the corpus varied, however, in length. The newspaper text tended uh, to be the, the shortest while fiction and academic prose were the longest because in newspaper they tried to make uh, the text rather short. While in, uh, in an academic writing, uh, write, writing, it is rather long. The Les We Corpus aimed to provide a representative sampling of text across the discourse types it contained. The conversational data in the corpus was uh, collected in real life settings and is uh, many times larger than most other collections of conversational data. Both the, uh, the British and American conversational data were collected from representative samples of the British and USA populations. The conversational data in the corpus aimed to represent a range of English speakers in terms of age, sex, social, and regional uh, groupings. Now we reach to performance phenomena, and um, uh, this section, uh, we are going to uh, uh, explain it in the, uh, uh, in the next uh, video because of the uh, limit of the video. I don't want to extend the limit of the video. Thank you very much and goodbye.